بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہلو اینڈ ویلکم ٹو رحمان ڈیجیٹل پروڈکشن دس از لیکچر نمبر سیونٹین آف فزکس ففٹی ففٹی فور آف جی سی ای ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ is balanced and unbalanced forces because this chapter is totally dedicated to the forces wherever the concept of force is there we have to talk that concept so in this topic the word forces are also there so we have to give an in-depth look to this topic as well. When two or more than two forces acting on, when two or more than two forces acted acting upon a body and the resultant force is zero then the forces are said to be balanced. Uh, let us take few examples of it. For example, we have seen in the Newton's first law that if in the absence of external force, in the absence of external force, a body will remain at rest or will continue with the constant motion. So it means that there is a resultant force of zero. Ladies and gentlemen, before jumping into the world of resultant force, how will be it will be equal to zero? Let me tell you that if there are two vector i am giving you this concept because you will need this concept and there is another vector that is vector number b if we want to find the resultant of that of these two vector yani one force is in this direction and one force is in this direction what will be the resultant force so you have to bring this in the same direction and of the same magnitude uh, of the second vector and you have to connect that with the head of the first vector the tail of the second vector will be connected to the end from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector there will be a resultant force which is called r and r is equal to a vector plus b vector now there is a resultant force if these two forces are equal in magnitude with the same degree of angles then there will be no resultant force. But if you want 
that resultant force should be zero then there should be a close loop of these three vectors when there is a closed loop it means that the head of the last vector is in coincidence with the tail of the first vector so it means that the resultant force is zero and that is why we are saying forces acting upon a body and the resultant force is zero yani this one in this case so it means the forces are said to be in balance for example there is a rope one end is known as a and the second one is known as b one person is dragging that rope on this side and the second person is dragging that rope on this side this is the middle point i am denoting it with m r o if this rope is neither moving on this side nor on this side then it means that both the athletes are pulling this rope with the same force so if somebody is standing here and observing they will say that there is no force although they are applying forces in opposite direction but if somebody is observing this <coughs> main position then it means that he will observe that nobody is applying any force on this body so that is why this mean position is at rest let me give you an another example if there is a table <coughs> and there is a book on this table there is a book on this table so there are two forces acting on this book one is the weight of this book which is downward and one is the normal force applied by the surface of the table on the book we are denoting it by n ladies and gentlemen the book is stationary because the resultant force on the book is zero one force is upward and one force is downward both the forces are cancelling the effect of each other and that is what is the uh, statement of newton first law first part that if a body if in the absence of external force a body will remain at rest that is the first part so this body is at rest because w is cancelled by the normal force so this body is at rest and the resultant force on it is zero uh, <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain this in the context of diagram. First, I am putting this uh, weight and then bringing the tail of the second, which is this one here, and attaching it to the head of the first one. So you can see that there is no result and they are cancelling the effect of each other and there is no resultant r like 
in this case we are having the resultant force but here there is no resultant force in this case ladies and gentlemen this was the first example and there is the second example of the balance force there is a car moving in this direction how many forces acting on this car we will discuss that as well ladies and gentlemen there are this car is moving on a road there is one sort of force acting on it and that is called air resistance air resistance so one force is acting on it and we are denoting it by fr the second force which is acting on this is small f and that is the friction force that is the friction force yes uh, one is the f that is the force provided by the tires against the road fraction which is moving in this direction this car is moving in this particular direction what will be the resultant force one is the friction force of the road which we are denoting by small f and one is the air resistance also so if a car is moving with constant speed in a particular direction it means constant velocity then f must be equal to the sum of air resistance and f which is the frictional force this force is in equilibrium with these two forces then the resultant force on it is equal to if one of them is greater than each other then they will not move for example if the air resistance is more than this capital f then it means the car is not allowed to move forward because of the heavy resistive force of the air if f yani friction of the road is greater than this f in this case the car will also not move towards the right so in both the cases if this these to the sum of f and f r is equal to f then it means that the car will either remain stationary at rest or it will move with the constant speed no increase in that so that was the second part ladies and gentlemen let us take another example there is an inclined plane which is making an angle theta with the horizontal and there is a block of wood on it there is a block of wood on it so two forces well work on 
will act on it one is the w force which is always towards the uh, earth the center of the earth and one is the normal force which is exerted by this inclined plane and the third one is a frictional force which will be in this direction if w is equal to n plus f then the block will remain stationary if w weight of this is equal to the normal force which is always normal to the surface in this direction and there is a resistance of this inclined plane on the block so if these two forces are added together and then you are measuring it and it becomes equal to weight of this block then it will remain stationary it will not move but if there is a more polished surface of this inclined plane there is a polished surface of this inclined plane so it means friction is reduced and then it will move then the body will not be in then the body will not be in the stationary position rather it will slide over the inclined plane so keep these things in mind if we represent this by the arrow diagram and we want to find the resultant force so i drew this w downwards and this with that word direction in this direction now i have to complete the parallelogram and the parallelogram we have to draw this much line and this much line so it means that from here it will be the resistance of this and it will be in this direction we are having two forces which is w and then we are having this n let us do it this was parallelogram diagram but let us add these two forces with the head to tail rule for example i am drawing this w first in its original direction and of its original magnitude and then bringing the tail of this to the head of the in the same direction this one i am bringing this in the same direction as it is from the tail of the first vector till the head of the last vector a representative line is showing the resultant vector a representative line is showing the resultant vector so resultant vector will be in this direction which is in this direction so you can the resultant if the resultant is zero if we add these three forces and it is giving you a close path a close loop then it means that it will be in balance this this and this if they are making a closed loop 
then it means that it will remain stationary this block otherwise it will not remain stationary okay ladies and gentlemen uh, this is about the balance we are talking unbalanced force we will talk in the subsequent video but here we are talking about the balance force and a very important example is given on page number 48 page number 48 of the book there is a very important example is given they given you the example like this that there is a weight a mass attached to a string at the end and somebody is pulling it in this direction which is f which is in this direction and it is also given that this is making an angle with the vertical and that is 30 degree it is given that 30 degree angle they are making with the horizontal you know that there will be a force which is equal to w acting downward which will always be downward toward the center of the earth so ladies and gentlemen there is tension inside this is another force we talked about different forces tension is also a force which is in that direction this thing is given in the book let me read the work example and then we will solve this question a mass of weight w this is mass and this is w equal to 6 newton and that weight is 6 newton hang on the end of a string that is hang on the end of a string this mass which is pulled sideways by a force which is pulled sideways by a force f so that the string makes an angle of 30 degree with the vertical and that is also denoted here this dash dash line shows vertical and that is 30 degree uh with the vertical as shown in the figure 3.29 actually this is figure 3.29 in the book the tension t in the string is 7 newton this is 7 newton remember this is 6 newton and that is 7 newton so the tension t in the string is 7 newton but the question is asking by means of a force parallelogram determine the force f that how much force is acting on it okay ladies and gentlemen we are denoting this tension as in this i am denoting it and because tension is 7 newton so you can draw it as a 7 cm in this direction and then i am drawing this weight which will be a little bit less than this this is w and this is tension this is 7 newton and this is 6 newton this is given in the book now you have to complete the parallelogram so you have to draw a line 
in this direction and in this direction so the parallelogram is completed now what will be the resultant force the resultant force will be from here to here and as you can see the direction is this one so measure this line and that will be the answer if you measure this practically because i drew it freehandedly if you are drawing it practically on a piece of paper so that will be equal to 3.5 newton so with the 3.5 newton uh, force uh, this is balanced because they hold it here with the 3.5 newton force and that is balanced not moving which is making an angle of 30 degree so that is the whole story about the balance force but one very important thing i want to explain it with the greater detail there is a self assessment question is given there is a self assessment there is a self assessment question is given they given us a horizontal bar like this on which there are two forces acting one is this one and one is this one ladies and gentlemen both are making an angle of 60 degree with that horizontal this is 60 degree and this is also 60 degree and they given us that this is w this is the weight which will always downward the tension in this string is 10 newton as well as 10 newton in this string they want us to find the value of w they want us to find the value of w there are two strings a third string is hanged with it and that third string is attached with a weight w ladies and gentlemen in this case if w plus this tension one and this tension one and plus tension two is equal to zero then they will be balanced both this plus this plus this is equal to i am saying that this is t1 and this is t2 if the resultant force acting on it is equal to w so it means that w is downward in this way and these are in upward so it means remember this formula t is equal to w divided by 2 first we are deriving it mathematically and then we will turn our focus to uh, diagrammatically so w is equal to 2 into t i am taking these 2t is equal to t into t because both are equal so we are considering it as a t so this is t1 is also equal to t 
and T2 is also equal to T. So it means we are taking 2. So W is equal to 2 into 10. So it means that it will be equal to 20 Newton. The answer will be 20 Newton. Let us do it diagrammatically. So we have to create a parallelogram like this. I am drawing it free-handedly. You have to draw it to the scale. So you have to measure this area and that will be of 20 centimeter. It means that 10 will be this one and 10 will be this one. So it means diagrammatically you can also prove that this is equal to W is equal to 20 centimeter. It means that it is 20 Newton force. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to draw it 10 centimeter. You have to draw it 10 centimeter. And similarly, you have to draw this one is 10 centimeter and this 10. So this on 10 on this side and 10 on that side, it will become uh, uh, 20 and the direction will be downward because weight is always pointing towards the downward portion. So ladies and gentlemen, if there is one force, which is with 30 angle and the second one is with the 60 angle. One is the 30 angle and there is W. So how you will find this because there is a tension of 10. This is T1 and there is a tension T2 which is also 10. I am leaving this question to you people that is absolutely easy. You have to keep in mind this formula. Uh, T tension will be equal to W divided by 2. Because this weight is divided by two different tensions in the string. So, if you got the answer of this, write it in the comments portion and then I will discuss it. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the whole story about the balance forces. Tomorrow we will discuss the unbalanced forces which is also of extreme importance. So don't miss the next lecture for that you have to press the bell icon and subscribe my channel so that whenever I upload that video, video you will be informed very immediately. Thank you very much for watching. Allah Hafiz.